there are so many studios I like to work in. I think every studio has something that's really special and that it's particularly good for. And one thing that I really wanted to make a foundational idea was that it was artist down so that their experience, you're basically making a petri dish for whatever they want to feel. A short drive out of Nashville sits Moxie, an extraordinary studio founded by multi-instrumentalist and producer Jordan Hamlin. Jordan has played with the likes of Missy Higgins, Rachel Yamagata, Katie Herzig, Lucy Wainwright Roche and Indigo Girls, producing records for the latter too. Watch as Jordan takes us on a tour of Moxie and explains more about the ethos behind this beautiful residential recording facility. At a distance You can see what's falling down I'm Jordan Hamlin and we are in the control room at Moxie in Nashville, Tennessee. I started out as a touring musician, I guess, and ended up playing with a lot of different people and um, I toured with Katie Herzig for a really long time. We toured for like seven or eight years together and Fiona Tang and Joe Pug and Dar Williams and all these people and I would jump from tour to tour and I, it was a really busy but special time. But um, some of the artists I was touring with at the time asked me to do some of those musical directory things in the studio and we ended up making records together. So Lucy Wainwright Roach is one of the um, I guess it was like technically the third record I did, but the first one where I was really like thinking about it as producing, whatever that means, I don't even know. Um, and so sh that was a really important record, I think, in terms of thinking about what is producing, what, how do I think about making music with, these, with this person, and, um, and then that led to doing the Indigo Girls record and um, that was also a really important record for me and um, it's just kind of like gone like that where you know somebody hears you do one thing and then recognizing something in themselves or something that they like and um, thinking it might be compatible and you know making a thing. <laughs> um, the process of making this place has been so fascinating we've kind of like it's like a, a dog that's walking a dog that's bigger than you because <laughs> you're like, oh, I see what you are. Um, so uh, my business partners, Marcy and Gail, live in Arizona and um, they, um, we were in another business together and I kind of offhandedly mentioned, um, we started talking about other kind of ventures or whatever and we had a different idea but then as that evolved, I kind of offhandedly mentioned that my dream was just to have my own place in the woods. And she was like, then why don't we do that? And I was like, I don't know, that seems too, you know, you can't dream that big. Um, but she kind of is, is good at dreaming big like that. So um, we lucked out finding this place to find this much land this close to the city. We're 10 minutes from downtown or 15 minutes, depending on traffic. Um, and uh, it's incredible to have a window like this in the track room and control room, of, and that's a primary thing that keeps you connected to what time of day it is. And I, I was mixing a record here recently, and I made sure and keep the windows open so that the sun would shine straight into my eyeballs at the at a certain at like a certain point in sunset. Um, and because it was like a physical thing that had me do an emotional check-in and be like, have you eaten? Do you need to step outside? Probably, because you get in that work mode and like never come up for air. And when you're in like a basement type feel, um, that's easy to do. And um, so having, keeping connected with the outside and being able to record, you know, your moody feely song when it's like a f winter scene that's like overcast it's just like perfectly like it's just like MSG's the entire thing you know it took us about a year we we kept a pretty good clip but it took us about a year to build the structure and then um and I feel like maybe another not quite a year to build the studio part and really outfit that 
and do because there's so many custom builds it's um, we're probably always going to be doing this forever and I, I do find that as people come back there's always going to be new things every time you come back it's going to be a little different because we're building new things and that's one of my favorite parts of it there are so many studios I like to work in I think every studio has something that's really special and that it's particularly good for and one thing that I really wanted to make a foundational idea was that it was artist down so that their experience you're basically making a petri dish for whatever they want to feel so we have things like projectable walk curtains that pull across that you have like immersive projection and um, so as we're building that out um, you know you can have artists who are like I want to make a record that feels like X and then we can write video treatments to make you feel more like that and have a place that feels um, sort of homey as soon as you walk in that you can you don't think twice about taking your shoes off or whatever it is that even though it um, has like a fantastic nature about it in this kind of like there's a lot of wonder and whimsical kind of things um, it's still about the artist's experience of their time here and everything the engineer's purpose there the producer's purpose there the player's purpose there the whole thing is um, they're at the top of that pyramid so having a place that is in service to them and their experience I think pays dividends for everybody else whenever they're um, in a good place. I think our family motto of making a lot with a little is I mean generations we have proven that to be true where we'll find um, I'm from a rural part of Kentucky and um, everybody just makes their things you know and you don't have a lot of money and you, but you have like uh, know-how and gumption and uh, and so this place is riddled with examples of that of like finding my mom is an expert at that uh, and that actually and um, so uh, that led to things like the this cloud in the tracking room being I got like Home Depot wire and soldered a frame into this wire sculpture and um, because if you're gonna have a cloud it might as well be like beautiful and soulful and also handle their frequencies and um, same with the light fixture like you know we didn't have a huge budget for a $6,000 light fixture but that room would love one so instead um, we like welded a circle and then hand poured crystals and just glued them together and it's like oh you can get that same way and it's a little bit of that same spirit in the studio um, in making records here that um, it allows you into the space more if you feel like oh we're just making this up we don't have to like believe that we are at a certain level to like um, warrant our right to be here we're just like playing in the sandbox that's all we're doing anyway you know in the control room it was important for me to be able to see outside and see the band and be able to look down where you can actually there's a lot of things in the studio that um, give you multiple paths depending on preference because it's so preferential about engineers or producers or artists about what experience they want to have or what sets them free the most and so for some people they don't want to see the band they want to like be able to use their ears and so I kind of made it where you can sit down and not see the band um, or you can kind of raise your chair or stand up and immediately see everyone so you can have either way and um, and same thing with some of the sounds keeping some things the, the gear having things near and the microphones where you even have lines of sight as you're thinking through what mic choices you're going to have and be able to easily get to them and I'm often thinking of creative decisions as I'm sitting here talking to the artist so if I can visually I'm a visual learner so if I can see that 12th string and be like oh yeah that would be great on this it helps me uh, do less mental work and um, so we had we have things like that that are kind of affecting you at every point and then um, you know, we do have a 14-foot couch. Everybody always asks if it was built in here. <laughs> but uh, it just perfectly fit. Um, 
And then we have uh, the cloud on the ceiling right above the desk that um, uh, you can like change the color of it depending on where, where you are that day if you're feeling a blue. Um, also in here we have the Neve 5088 and I just love it. I have to say it's so exact, it like fits uh, what I love and need the most because it's um, has the perfect amount of like transparent and open and um, true. It's like an accurate representation, representation because I want to make all those creative decisions on the back end. So if I've got something in that just sounds good, then I can do anything versus if I'm heavily processing th something coming in, um, it makes the room smaller that I have to work with. And the room's already going to be smaller for a million other reasons. I'm going to have limitations elsewhere. So having this desk has been um, such a fun, creative partner in making records here. Constellation Are you laughing at our soul? We We are in the piano room now, and there's um, my favorite we have a Yamaha U3 in here and um, whenever you buy gear it's always like I have a hypothesis that this is going to be great because it, but because everything has such a different character you never know but this thing is just has changed the path of records for me on the um, on one record I was doing we started out to make a electric and vocal record and we started playing this piano on it and it became like a p very piano heavy record just because of the sound just like affected like our whole imagination for the project and it's got the felt um, pedal that drops the the felt arm down it has this amazing muted it's like instantly a soundtrack as soon as you play it i no joke every uh time i show people the piano i've had over 10 people um like tear up uh i know that sounds ridiculous but there's some sort of like physical reaction that happens whenever you hear certain sounds or whatever in this piano has one of those things so I spend a lot of hours in here just playing stuff <laughs> um, also in this room we've got a rope ceiling I guess we're gonna call it and um, it's another way of solving a sound problem in a interesting way an artful and kind of soulful way hopefully um, and we took 250 foot spools of cotton rope and um, my assistant Helen hand cut and whip stitched um, thus far 500 feet and we've got a little more to go but but you it makes you um, it does the diffusion and absorption thing um, but also you can slide them over and concentrate them in certain areas if you want it very dead by the U3 um, you can make it so. Um, but we wanted to keep it live enough where it's a piano room. You want to hear the, hear the piano? Every summer, remember to pack your things into the car. We are in the tracking room now, and um, it's a fairly big room, and we tried to make it where the angles were such that you can keep it live and it still sounds killer and um, we've got a lot of ways to change the room so it becomes a couple different rooms in one it's like a russian nesting doll of rooms and so we've got the very large uh, drapes that you can pull around and it deadens the room in a pretty significant way a pretty dramatic way um, which serves sonically as a benefit and also aesthetically and experientially if you're having a very, if it's at noon and you're trying to record the song that's like, feels like driving at night or whatever it is. Um, sometimes it's helpful to, I've pulled the curtains before and put on like the mood lights and it does the, um, switches the brain a little easier. And then we've got these white projectable curtains that pull across that you can kind of project different scenes on as you're tracking. Um, and we've got vocal booths um, in here and, um, my poor <laughs> the guy who helped us with the, some of the sound design I was like can I use any fabric I want to or do I have to use like the fabric 
and uh, he was like, you can use anything. And so I brought him silk embroidery and he was like, I don't know if we can be friends after this. Um, we also have um, some kind of hidden things of, uh, like we have a little amp locker in the tracking room that if you want to have the amp in the room, but have some separation, um, that's another option that you can kind of like plug into. Um, and I mean, one of the biggest features is the view in here that it's, uh, it has a ton of huge windows that you kind of feel like you're in a tree house a little bit whenever you're tracking in here, which is nice. Well, this room, we have a bit of a name problem with, I guess, but because it was called the trampoline room, because that was its, uh, it was designed for a trampoline. Um, and then once we got further into the build, we were like, oh yeah, we need a place for a lot of other instruments. So then it's kind of become this thing, which, um, you know, we've got this curved wall that kind of like continues around and there's a lot of hidden storage in places that kind of delightfully uh, rolls out and has like the color coded uh, e equal parts organization. It's just, it really delights me. Um, and we've got our like hard catalog kind of built in, but it's also made where the distance between ideation and execution can be really small. So we've already run cables in the cavity, so they're not on the ground and stuff like that. And um, each of the, like the guitar amp world and bass world and um, even the keys along the ramp are um, already kind of wired up. So as soon as you want to try something out, you can kind of like unhide it and be able to execute immediately. And then there's some kind of like hidden nooks that we're slowly kind of building out. There's a little, I call it like the reading nook up there that has a really great sight line to the outside. So if you need a, you need to recharge for a minute and clear your head, you can kind of find a space that's a little more cozy because there's so many big spaces. I need kind of like a <laughs> moment like that sometimes to make a record. Um, we also have a sign up here, a human cannibal sign that is from the set of Boardwalk Empire that we randomly got at the set sale. Um, that is a fun little whimsical piece. <laughs> yeah, I think there's some cool special pieces um, around. We've got a 60s round badge, um, Gretsch round badge kit that we just got. And that sounds incredible. And um, this 1920s Ludwig snare. Um, and even the things that have super, just like very like character kind of things. I like having those pieces in that you can use for very specific fla flavors while still having very like, you know, flexible, like everybody's gonna have like a Princeton or, you know, whatever it is. But, um, like we have this stereo Gibson amp that just sounds like a dream and to be able to co do cool, like stereo image stuff, especially in a room that's this live and has such a unique sound, um, is we've gotten some really cool things along with the reverb shoot. Um, there's a reverb shoot that goes between the um, airlock to the tracking room and the trampoline room gym. And um, we've put mics in here for room mics um, and drums in the tracking room using this as like a reverb chamber um, has sounded pretty awesome. This room is one example. There's a few places in the studio that we kind of use as reverb chambers that are very specific flavors. So one of those is um, this room that has very tall ceilings and um, interesting angles and you know things like that. And then there's the master bath that's completely tiled that we actually have tie lines that go from the console into the master bathroom, um, both that you can be in there and sing and kind of reamp things in multiple places and have speakers. We've done that before. We have drums being played in the tracking room, played through a speaker recorded in the gym and through a speaker recorded in the master bathroom. And you have, can audition the reverb and blend it as whatever works in the track. Um, and the dining room is that way too. We've got um, different angles and different heights and things like that. So you can have multiple big rooms and 
um, take advantage of whatever tool best suits what you're doing at the moment. Oh, the stars are still the same. Oh, they see all of our pain. Oh, they can't do anything and slow. So we're in the dining room now, and um, this place is kind of made for um, kind of holding up together. So we made it ho a house too, so it feels homey. So you in in the I often have artists clear their headspace by like cooking meals and stuff here, um, but it's also every room you can record in too. And we've got um, boxes in the dining room. You can see there's a session happening. Um, right now, so it's, everything's kind of all out together, um, and we've got a you know kitchen and a little like cozier living room that are different spaces. But we have two um, bedrooms up here, and then a third master bedroom, and then there's another like suite downstairs for, with a little more separation and privacy that has like a seven-person hot tub and you know a million ways and like a fire pit and stuff like that. A million ways to um, incorporate that play and incorporate the uh, actually enjoying yourself in the midst of a, what can be a sort of arduous process. I think this room is particularly good for um, horns actually sound really good in the foyer and we had drums in here um, on a project that was loud <laughs> but um, but it, particularly like interesting reflections and things um, sound great in this room. It's fun to like, ex like just try things in every different space and see what the best version of it is. Well, thanks for stopping by. This is uh, Jordan Hamlin and Moxie. And um, I want to thank Sound on Sound for even coming out. We're big fans. I'm excited to have you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the Sound on Sound YouTube channel and hit the notifications bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Thanks for watching. That Orion's sword is burning in.